morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. <laughs> it's Thursday. Ah, <laughs> uh, but you mean the video posted. The video posted. Ah, uh, literally every single person who's shown up <laughs> said that exact thing. Yes. Except me, who doesn't. Who subscribe. pays attention? No. Or doesn't subscribe? I have subscribed, but I don't. Well, thanks for liking, subscribing, and watching the videos. And there's a bunch going on today as Satchel comes to tackle all things electrical, starting with the water pumps and the bilge. Work gets done inside, outside, and all over Arabella. But we'll start with Aiden picking up where he left off with the lithium battery housing going under the pilot berth. So I got my battery boxes. Now I need to mount them to this ceiling here. And to do that, I'm fabricating some bronze brackets. So let's get to it. Let's fabricate and bend some of this bronze that Joe milled up this morning. And we need to make three more of these. What do you want for lunch? Ooh. Just the Reuben? Just the Reuben. Six or twelve? Twelve. Can I get you to go fetch? Sure. You can grab me the card. Just holler at me. All right, back to it. Or oh, close. So Joe said we wouldn't be able to bend this. Nice, that looks close. But that's not bending too. No, that bends really well. I like it. After I get all these bent, can get this welded up just like that. Pretty close, let's go see how it fits. Now these don't have to be super accurate, so just kind of eyeballing them in. Get these over the drill press, start cutting.
say? Making shapes. Making a frame for a pump. Oh. A little template. Because I wanted to make sure I could fit it in under the hat or under the floorboards. Mm. Now I'm transferring it to my nice piece of air dried quarter sawed oak. To live in the bilge. <laughs> to live in the bilge and hopefully not rot. Once we get to the interior carpentry, it'll just cruise along. It has. That's true. It has. <laughs> Compared to building the hull, it absolutely has. Yeah, I first helped out when there wasn't a boat, you know, there wasn't a boat, that's for sure. I think the reason I started helping Steve is because I grew up right nearby. Yeah. I grew up in, in Shutesbury, which is just a couple towns over. As a kid, I was really into sailing, and I went to college to study ship design, naval architecture and marine engineering. And when I found out somebody was building a sailboat, you know, basically in my backyard, out of wood that they cut down, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Figured I'd like to be a part of that. And the first thing that they teach you when you go into that degree program is, you know, roughly 50% of you are here to design sailboats, but 90% of you will end up working on commercial ships. Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of work in the sailing industry. And commercial ships are pretty cool too. Most recently worked on battery electric ferries for the state of Washington, which is a really cool project. Really very exciting for me to be on the forefront of maritime decarbonization. Uh, and then for about the last year and a half, I've been working at a startup called Aloft, making wind propulsion systems for commercial ships to save on fuel. Yeah. And crazy. now I got a little time off to help Steve out. Uh, and hopefully, you know, the goal for me is to get, I don't know if this is Steve's goal for me, but my goal is to have the electrical system pretty much buttoned up in a month. The power system is probably the most interesting one on the boat. Yeah. Boats have only really been using lithium chemistry batteries for the last two, three years. Yeah. And so there's a bunch of new technology that you have to integrate with existing boat tech yeah. to make that work. Yeah, so I'm excited exactly. for that. While Aiden has been working on the batteries, Ross and George have been on deck cleaning up the pitch. And Steve has been busy making a version two of the galley sink. And Scott is still cutting dovetails and making hatch covers. Akiva, the people wanna know, how you doing? <laughs> this is some burl wood that Steve has milled up for cabinet faces, little drawer faces for the galley. of what's to come.
before us. This looks so good, George. You just run in more conduit. This is the conduit I ran yesterday. Yeah. We had a little tr problem with it um, interfering with the top drawer. Mm -hmm. So I had to readjust some positions. But now, top drawer just drops right in. <laughs> this drawer has to weigh all of it. Like, I think it's 80 pounds. <laughs> Every plane in the shop. <laughs> Now. Is your conduit too tight in there? <laughs> I think my conduit hits this drawer now. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Definitely hitting the conduit. Yep. <laughs> Prefer that. <laughs> what am I going to do now? Kind of hard to make that wider right now. The conduit in there. Yeah. And yet, that's what we gotta do. Um, I'm gonna cut these zip ties. The problem is, it's very hard to cut one of these larger when yeah. <laughs> it's filled with wires. <laughs> Fit? You missed my eureka moment. What can recreate it. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Woo! Beautiful. <laughs> Victory. It fits. Now for these ones. Anybody want to bet whether I have to run another conduit back there sometime in the next month? Because <laughs> I won't take that bet. You sure? With space at the workbench freed up, Scott got back to the lazarette hatch, cutting the rebate for the acrylic. And Satchel moved on with setting up the various pumps that will be going throughout the bilge. You know, this is a cruising boat. Steve's going to live on it. There's a lot of systems that go into making it a nice place to live and also just a safe safe place and, and keeping the boat in good condition over its life. Some of these things are pretty luxurious and choices that Steve made um, that maybe I wouldn't make, but I'm a little younger than him. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm starting by installing some of the things that are not necessarily electrical components, but things that need power, and we need to have them in the boat. So here we've got three pumps. This is a bilge pump, this is a gray water pump, and then this is a fresh water pump. And then this bilge pump obviously pumps out the bilge. And by putting them kind of in the same place, we make it a little harder to run the piping, but it's easy to access all of them through the same hole in the floor plate, and the bilge pump is in a really nice spot in case it gets clogged, you can clear that out pretty easily. This gray water pump is used to pump the gray water tank overboard. And then the fresh water pump, this is the luxury one. So Steve wants hot showers, which I understand the reasons behind. And we're going to great, great expense to make that happen. So this fresh water pump is going to pull from the fresh water tank, and it's got a pressure switch built into it, which means it acts like the water system 
in your home. It's going to pump until it reaches a set point pressure, which is about 50 PSI, and then it's going to shut off until you use water, and then it's going to start pumping again to maintain that pressure. So the outlet from this goes over to the hot water heater and keeps the hot water heater pressurized while it's heating up and producing the hot water for the showers. Nice. What are the things that you would do differently because you're a young man? <laughs> The hot showers thing, absolutely, I agree, hot showers are really nice. This is going to get me into the YouTube comments. I don't shower all that much, so it seems like a lot of extra stuff to put in to be able to shower. Like, I like swimming in cold water. I like an outdoor shower, and I think a lot of the places Steve's going, he could have a solar shower and just shower on deck and enjoy the, enjoy the nice, beautiful outdoors. I guess we can hook this up to a hose and he could shower on deck still. But the, the hot water heater is set up for AC current. So we've got this big inverter that Aiden's been working on mounting. And so the cost and the, you know, all the extra systems just to run that hot water heater, we'll see if he sticks with that long term. There's a lot of pumps. This is, there's three pumps here. There's two more bilge pumps aft and the seawater washdown pump. Yeah. Then we've got the anchor drain pump up forward and another bilge pump. So... And this is all to prevent the boat from sinking in case of, like, catastrophic? Well, no. So, actually, this is the only catastrophic electric bilge pump. There's also a manual bilge pump, which is pretty significant volume for, for catastrophes. The main reason for the smaller bilge pumps is there's a bunch of dams in the boat where there are bronze frames that are impenetrable. So water drains down to the bilge and then stops at a dam in the forepeak one back here and then water leaks in through the prop shaft bearing and goes into a dam back there so we have pumps that are mounted as low as possible just to keep that water yeah. and get that water out what's the word if you uh And Ernest. Hello, buddy. You guys ready to get some work done today? Yeah? Alright. Let's get to it. Yes. <laughs> Morning, Ross. How's it going? Just here to ruin your shot. You're making my shot. We got George finishing up the half table. Alright, so I'm right here working on the builds, right? Right. And I'm drilling stuff. I'm making chips. Yep. You gotta keep the work site clean. That's right. Foot switch. Whoa! Look at that. Hands free. Hands free foot vacuum switch. technology. <laughs> Refreshing some dog holes. Yeah, so traditionally you would make like a two inch thick or more top, but I didn't want to put all that weight in the boat. Yeah. So we've got pieces of thicker maple that go across the bench that the dog holes are drilled into. Yeah. But this swells this way and the top swells and shrinks this way. Hmm. So I'm ever so slowly basically elongating the holes in this timber yeah as this swells and shrinks and the tabletop is thick enough and this is thick enough that even with that discrepancy the, the dogs grab fine and it's all good yeah and eventually at some point i will have gotten the maximum swell and the maximum shrink and i won't have to ream them out every morning it's like 
I don't know, every few months you scotch a sixteenth off one side or the other. Yeah. It's not much. Nice. What do you got going on here? Uh, I'm working on the base that the fridge sits on. Mm -hmm. The corner here on the other side was getting chewed up on uh, the frames a little bit. So I was just kind of rounding it over and do this side to match. Nice. This is the rear hatch cover skylight thingy. The lazarette. What he said. And Scott used the Jonathan Katz Moses dovetail jig. jig to make these dovetails. He's a prominent woodworking YouTuber, and I'm sure lots of our viewers watch him. Scott, you had such a good introduction yesterday. I know worked out well yes people love you and did a great job interviewing me yes and people had really positive comments to say about me all day yeah i believe one person was like master woodworker yeah <laughs> i'm like you didn't read the description where it specifically says first time doing it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was This is the same idea on the four hatch where like water will slope off of it. Yeah, like and then yeah. is there a bronze trim on this? Like there's another bar of bronze that's gonna go on there now too. Yeah. Good afternoon, young sir. How are you? Um, Hello. decent. Hello. Yeah. How's sugaring going? Eh, pretty good. We haven't been getting much lately. No? Well, you ready for a mission? Um, depends on what the mission is. Depends on the mission is. Well, there's always polishing bronze. Mm hmm Is there anything that can start to be cleaned up? Yeah, any of the already stuff. Uh, just scraping up a little bit of the thick part and then just pulling up the tape. Should be alright. Uh, we might have to go through his experience because he did clean up the nose. See what he did. See how you're tearing the tape? Be mm -hmm. careful that you don't gouge in the back. Okay. Once Aaron was up to speed on deck, Steve started getting the cedar, oak, and cherry burls ready to become cabinet faces in the galley.
little coop at you. I don't think the viewers have seen this fully cleaned up like that yet, because it wasn't in yesterday's video. Well, part of it was, but not that. Yeah, I don't know where we left off filming with that. Yeah, it's ready for varnish, and all the other parts are up there and ready. Yeah. When he does the Northwest Passage, we made him a deal. Yeah. That I was gonna go along for that. Yeah. It's like, he said, you can you can pick one one trip, and I was like, Northwest Passage. I don't care when it is. That's the one. Yeah. That would be insane. We're gonna like those hot showers. <laughs> That's true. I'm gonna be. I don't know if we're gonna have the battery power for the hot showers. I think we might be push, pinching a little bit to get there. Yeah. But if we have the battery power for the hot showers and the Northwest. West Passage, I'm going to eat my words. Yeah. For sure. <laughs>